Today we are continuing our series of budgets around the world and we are going to be looking at Jackie's budget and he is a pretty high income earner which is really exciting. In this series I've done low income, I've done kind of mid tier and then also high income as well. I love seeing all the different varieties of incomes and lifestyles and places that people live. I even have some international ones which is really exciting. So we're going to look at his budget. He lives in Dallas, Texas. We're going to dive in. But I do want to say if you want to submit your budget, I'll have a link in the description as well as the exact budget template that I'll be using. I'll have that linked for you. But Let's dig into his budget in Excel. Okay, so here we are in Excel and he lives in Dallas, Texas. He is a director of financial planning and analysis of a restaurant. He makes $144,000 pre-tax salary. He puts 2% into his 401k, so that is taken out before he gets his paycheck. He is single with no kids and he doesn't use any uh, sinking funds or have any short-term savings goals. His why is financial dependence and wants to retire early, around 40 to 45, and he has a goal to buy a house in the next 12 to 18 months. So, like I said, he is a pretty high income earner, but does not own a home yet and has no kids and is single. So digging right in, he takes home $9,775, so just about 10K he takes home every month. And let's look at his bill. So he has housing, which he rents for $1,600 a month. His utilities are cable, electric, and internet are $145 a month. His tolls are $20 a month. Car repair maintenance is $70 a month. Insurance, which is car renters and life insurance, is $150 a month. Entertainment is $300 a month. Household necessities is $75 a month. And then travel is $500 a month. Then down below, he has groceries and eating out. He combined these as food, so I just kind of separated them for the budget sake of $270 for groceries and $200 for eating out. So he said $470 between the two. So that is um, those two, which is, is pretty high for one person. But, you know, single guy, he's probably eating out or eating nicer foods as well. Um, personal spending, he didn't put anything for personal spending. And then gas, $120 a month. Um, which gives us a total cost of regular cost for $3,450. He has no debt, which is amazing. And then he's putting uh, about $6,000 a month into a brokerage account and says he has $210,000 in that brokerage account. Then he has an emergency fund of $12,000. So as we can see here, he has no sinking funds that he says he has no sinking funds or short term goals. I'm going to disagree, but we'll get to that in a second. And then he has a remaining income of $325. So obviously things happen throughout the month and every month is going to be different. So he has a little bit of a buffer of $325, give or take, depending on what, you know, he's spending on eating out or household or different things like that. So first I want to say, Love that he has an emergency fund that's just over one month's worth of expenses. So I would work on building that up to, to a good three to six months. It looks like he is concentrating on investing, which is awesome that he's concentrating on investing, but especially if he wants to be a homeowner in the next 12 to 18 months, he's going to need to build up that savings for down payment, for closing costs, and also for an emergency fund. I especially recommend people having a good emergency fund if they're buying a house. For example, he lives in Texas, so it's going to be very similar to Florida. If he buys a house and puts all of his money into his down payment and his closing costs and kind of clears out his emergency fund, if his air conditioning goes, he's screwed if he needs a new roof. If our air conditioning goes in Florida and same in Texas, you, it's not just a luxury to have air conditioning. That's like an anti-mold treatment. Our air conditioners are actually more dehumidifiers. So they pulled out the moisture so that we don't get mold. So that would be really bad. So you want to build up, especially if you're a homeowner and buying a home. So the things that a landlord would typically cover if it breaks, you don't have to cover, or you're going to have to cover if you are a homeowner. So I would work on building up three to six months for a emergency fund. So we're well over, we're not well over, but we're over one month so far. So we're about a month and a half so far. So that's awesome. So we want to build, continue building this up. 
Then he says he doesn't have any sinking funds. I disagree. So it looks like um, car maintenance and travel are both sinking funds. So I would move them down here to the sinking funds regular than regular costs. So I don't think, I'm assuming here, but I don't think he's spending $500 a month of traveling every single month. I think he's putting $500 away to travel so that way, you know, once a year, a couple times a year, how often he's able to go on some nice trips or, you know, maybe he has to travel for work or travel for a relationship or family or whatever it is. So I would just move that down to savings that he can kind of pull from and kind of build up that account there. Um, with that, I would put, make sure that the emergency fund and any sinking funds are in a high yield savings account. You guys know I use CIT Bank. I love CIT Bank. Right now they're 5.05% um, on any accounts over $5,000. So on their platinum account over five, if you have over $5,000. So I would definitely recommend putting it in a CIT Bank account. Even if you have under five grand, I think it's 4.65% right now, which is amazing. Okay, so I want to look here and see where we're at for his savings rate. So we are looking at, he is saving um, $6,000 divided by nine, seven, seven, five. So he is saving 61% of his income. That's amazing. 61% is going to his, his brokerage account and into his retirement. So that is awesome. Um, it's, he's wanting to reach financial independence. He is definitely taking those steps to do that. And, you know, if he's able to cut a little bit more of groceries and eating out, then, then that's just going to speed up the process even more. If he can cut a little bit of travel and put that towards, um, his savings rate, then that's going to increase that even more as well. But overall, this is awesome. He does not have a side hustle. If you guys know what I think about that, I don't think that we should rely only on our day job. Now, I know that he does have an amazing job and is making great money, but I always think that we should have some some forms of income on the side so that we're not putting all of our ba our eggs in one basket. So that is my, my recommendation there would just be to work on some other type of side hustle on the side as well you know, even if it is something passive, um, some form of passive income online. And you guys know I love online income and I have tons of blog posts on it as well as passive income videos for you guys as well. Don't forget to grab your own template of this, the budget template that I have. I have it in Excel as well as Google Sheets and also a printable version as well. And let me know, what do you guys think of this budget? Do you think that he is being a little too frivolous and is eating out his entertainment, his travel budget, or are you thinking, you know what? He makes good money, enjoy it, especially since he is single right now. So what are your thoughts on the budget? Be nice, but I would love to hear your thoughts and if you want to submit your budget as well I have it linked don't forget the secret emoji if you made it to the end and let's keep the conversation going if you want to see five passive income ideas that you can do right from home check out this video here and if you want to see the other budgets from around the world going from West Palm Beach Florida to Texas to Lincolnshire to all over the U.S. check out this video here hey.